I'm sure you were expecting Ibor Dimitri to be sitting here, and uh, Ibor's in this room right over here, but he said, you know what, Mike, you gotta get onto the camera at some point in time. So what I wanted to address in this video is this guy right here. This is the Razer Blade 13 in Mercury White. It has an Ice Lake 25 watt processor in it. Now, a lot of you asked when we did the review video about what would happen if you hook up this Ice Lake notebook to something like the Core X or any external GPU dock for that matter. So I decided in my spare time, uh, the little spare time that I have that I was actually going to try that. I bit off a little bit more than I could choose, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And I also wanted to compare it to something else, and that would be this guy right over here. This is the Blade 13 with Whiskey Lake, also a 25 watt CPU. So I wanted to get into this, the performance and a few of the hiccups that I encountered. But first, a message from our sponsor. The Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX from ASRock is the perfect compact motherboard to pair with your Intel 9th gen CPU. With its robust VRM design and higher quality MOSFETs, it's guaranteed for the best overclocking experience, plus you get an M.2 heatsink, next gen Wi-Fi support, and a higher quality DAC built in. Check it out down below. So with that out of the way, let's talk quickly about the premise behind why somebody would want this type of a setup. First of all, you're not going to be competing with high-end desktops, even though this will be priced very, very similarly to those higher-end systems. Now, this is for somebody who wants the efficiency, the portability, and the battery life of something like the Blade 13, so a thin and light notebook, but when they get home, they also want the power to be able to game or maybe even to do some rendering on the side as well in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or anything else that takes advantage of a higher scale GPU. I really went into this thinking it was gonna be straightforward. It's gonna be a weekend project, I can do it whenever I want. But boy, was I wrong. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna sort of complicate this video a little bit more by first going through some troubleshooting that I had to do to get the Core X and the Stealth working together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave some timestamps below so you can sort of skip ahead if you want to, or you can find that troubleshooting if you end up having this and you encounter some of the same issues. The first one is not really an issue, but something that you need to remember, and that's to plug any external GPU dock into the certified Thunderbolt 3 connector on your notebook. In this case, it's on the right-hand side of both these Stealth notebooks, and if you plug it into just the USB-C, and remember, USB-C does not mean that's Thunderbolt certified. If you plug it into just one of those standard connectors, it's going to boot, but you're not gonna get a video signal. Now, after you found the correct connector on your notebook, at least with the Ice Lake system, what I noticed is the best chance of success you have for properly setting up these two devices and them being recognized by one another is only plugging in the Core X after you do the initial boot of the system. So basically what you have to do is you have to start up the system, then plug it in, and then what you should have, at least as of Windows 1903, is a pop-up that has the Thunderbolt connectivity utility. And what you should choose from here is to always connect. If you don't do that, I did notice a lot of connectivity problems between the Ice Lake system and the Core X. Oddly enough, that didn't happen on the Whiskey Lake system. The next step is Windows should technically install the drivers. It's probably not gonna install the most recent drivers for the GPU that you've chosen. What I had to do initially for the Ice Lake system is install the Thunderbolt utility manually. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to that in the description below. There were a couple of other pretty major hiccups. One of the ones that I found happened more often than not was stuttering in Windows and massive amounts of CPU usage when I went to either move around Windows or even when I was in a game. The only way that I found to get around that was basically disable the Ice Lake GPU. There were a couple of other random crashes and Windows would freeze here and there, but the only way that I found to fix those was a power cycle when it froze. Another thing I wanted to bring up is this doesn't seem to be an issue with the Thunderbolt connection on the Stealth or the Core X. This is really an inherent Windows issue where devices just aren't talking to each other. So I'm hoping at least maybe with 1909 that's coming out right now that they're going to clean up a little bit of this. But right now it's completely usable. You just have to be aware of these small little hiccups that you're gonna encounter if you have Ice Lake and the Core X. Other thing that I came to realize is some games just aren't really happy with this setup. And that even has to do with, with the Whiskey Lake system too. First of all was Red Dead Redemption. Now, to be honest with you, what does that game work with anyways is already super picky but it just completely refused to boot the same thing was a little bit of a surprise to me and that was um star wars jedi fallen order what ended up happening with that one is it looked like it was going to start but then it just crashed and nothing ended up happening what about 
Resolve and Premiere that I talked about a couple minutes ago. Well, believe it or not, the Ice Lake system was super easy to set up on both of these. In Adobe Premiere, it worked perfectly and balanced all of the workloads across the CPU, the iris graphics, and the dock. On the other hand, for DaVinci Resolve, it was using the CPU and GPU at basically 100% without the iris plus graphics, but that's completely normal from what I understand. Whiskey Lake, on the other hand, that took a lot more work to set up properly, and I think the reason for that is that it has two built-in GPUs. It has the UHD graphics and the MX150, so the second these programs see the external dock, they get a little bit confused and they have to be told what to do. So let's go through the troubleshooting for each of those. So first of all, in Premiere, one of the problems that I saw is that for whatever reason, it defaulted to the software renderer. Now, what I ended up having to do for that one is just simply go into the NVIDIA control panel and force the discrete GPU or the high performance GPU to be used in the program. You also, of course, have to make sure that Mercury GPU acceleration is enabled. But once that was done, all of the GPUs seemed to be working and rendering times were improved by a huge amount. Now Resolve, it took a lot more work to actually function the way I wanted it to. The reason for that is it seemed to always want to emphasize the workloads onto the MX150 and that GPU became a complete bottleneck for the discrete card and the CPU. Well, I needed to go into Resolve and then Preferences and change my default GPU configuration by selecting CUDA and then manually making sure both of the GPUs were selected. I was able to see really good utilization of both the CPU and the GPU and rendering times were massively improved again, just like they were in Premiere. So now that we've got to this point, let's talk a little bit about the system specs. First of all is the Razer Blade Stealth 13 Mercury White. This has an i7-1065 G7 processor and 3733 megahertz memory. Another thing to mention about it is that it's operating in the 25 watt TDP spec. Now the same thing can actually be said about the Whiskey Lake notebook that I have here, and that's the Razer Blade 13 with the MX150. It has a i7-8565U processor, again operating at that 25 watts, and 16 gigabytes of 2,666 megahertz memory. Now what that allows us to do here is really compare apples to apples other than the memory speeds of an Ice Lake 25 watt CPU versus a Whiskey Lake 25 watt CPU, taking as much other things as possible out of the equation. We're gonna be using the same GPUs and let's talk about those GPUs for a second here too. So on the more affordable side, I chose the Asus GTX 1660 Super. On the higher end, it's an RTX 2070 Super Founders Edition. What I'm really interested to see is, will either of these CPUs end up bottlenecking at least on the high end? And is it really worth jumping up from a more affordable GPU to something like the 2070 Super? Jumping into the benchmarks, let's start things off with Apex Legends. Ice Lake is out front, which sort of surprised me because it operates consistently at a much lower clock speed than the Whiskey Lake processor. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the average frame rates look almost identical, but check out those 1% lows, especially with the RTX 2070. Basically, the Ice Lake 1065G7 delivers a smoother all-around gaming experience, and that trend continues into the outer world, even at 1080p and 1440p. But something else is interesting with these results too. If you're gaming on a 1080p monitor with an external GPU dock, the RTX 2070 really isn't worth it. It looks like it's being bottlenecked at least by both of the CPUs. At high resolution, it does provide a whole lot more performance, so that's something to take into account too if you are using a higher-end monitor. The only exception to all of this is Tomb Raider, which there seems to be an odd bottleneck somewhere for Ice Lake, even with Whiskey Lake. This game just doesn't play well at 1080p, and it has some serious limitations too at 1440p. Warhammer 2 has things jumping back to normal with the Ice Lake Blade Stealth leading by a pretty good margin at both 1080p and 1440p. Moving on to productivity, and the Ice Lake system can really start to stretch its legs in Premiere, and it beats out the Whiskey Lake notebook by a huge amount. Personally, I think that's because the system's MX150 GPU is still bottlenecking the external GPUs. Another thing interesting you'll notice is there's basically no difference in rendering times between the GTX 1660 Super and the RTX 2070 Super. And how about a different perspective? Without the external 
talk and action, this is what performance looks like. That's pretty significant. As for Resolve, the results are pretty much the same as with Premiere with the Ice Lake systems winning, but the gap has narrowed a lot in this case. But if you look a little bit closer, the Ice Lake paired up with the GTX 1660 Super is actually able to beat the Whiskey Lake RTX 2070 combo. Again, adding in the original non-docked results and it's pretty obvious that the external GPUs turn both of these slim and light notebooks into pretty good rendering stations. Now, with all that being said, I really wanted to wrap things up quickly, and we've been ragging on Ice Lake quite a bit here, especially when it came to certain devices that it's used in. But in this case in particular, it offered really, really impressive performance, at least in comparison to Whiskey Lake, particularly when it came to the 1% lows or the smoothness that it delivered across every game. Now, I'm not gonna debate whether that's because of the insanely high memory speeds, whether it's an architecture thing, or if it's something else altogether. But what I did see is definitely something that gives me hope for what Intel is bringing in the future to the desktop side because if we're looking at between 10, 15, sometimes even 20% increases from Whiskey Lake to Ice Lake when all other things are the same and you're using an external GPU dock, I'm wondering what that could actually translate to on the desktop side. Let's also talk about pricing very, very quickly. If you're playing at 1080p, I really wouldn't recommend going with something like the RTX 2070 Super because these low voltage CPUs, they end up bottlenecking that GPU quite a bit. On the flip side of that coin, the GTX 1660 Super, when paired up with something like the Core X, can give you some amazing performance for your thin and light notebook in a package that costs about $550 for the external GPU dock and the GPU. That combination, at least with Ice Lake and to a lesser extent Whiskey Lake, is a pretty interesting option for people who just want that thin and light notebook and want to upgrade their gaming experience. And with that, I think this video has come to an end. So I'm Mike with Haro Canucks. I hope that you enjoyed this first video that I've been in from start to finish. You can find some more uh, relevant content over here. You can subscribe up here and uh, I will see you or maybe not in the next one. Hopefully Ibar will show his face at some point in time, but until the next one guys.